Hi, I'm Bill Arnold. Thank you for listening to this podcast. There are many more podcasts available at MyFaithRadio.com. Your support makes this possible. Thank you. And a warm welcome to the afternoon show. I'm Bill Arnold, and today I've got Dr. Marcus Bachman here with me in studio. We're going to talk about how to deal with difficult people. And to start the hour, I want to ask you how you have dealt with difficult people or how you are dealing with difficult people, because some of the best wisdom at Faith Radio comes from you, because you have godly experience and you are hopefully uh, learning whatever God's trying to teach you with difficult people, and I would love to hear how you're handling it. If you can text over what it is, 877-933-2484, I'm sure you'll come up with some ideas as we can start this conversation with Dr. Bachman because he's got some great points he's going to bring up, and I think you're going to see yourself in one of these situations. Marcus, nice to have you back. Always good to be with you, Bill. Yeah. Now, have you ever, ever dealt with a difficult person? <laughs> Let's see. Today, yes. <laughs> Yesterday, right. yes. Yeah. The day before, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, since I can remember, yeah. yes. It's a, it's a common occurrence, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, I, I think there's a reason, uh, because it's so common, God's bringing people into our lives. What are we to learn how are we to respond? What does God have in store for us and for this other person? Is you know God loves our heart and God loves that other person's heart. So I think we need to be very mindful of let's respond in a way that God has instructed us to respond. Mm-hmm. And and I really believe that there are two separate roads that people go on. One is one of strong boundaries. I know that's become a very popular understanding of biblical truth. And it is true. And it is biblical. And, not but, but and, there's a biblical truth of what is God teaching me in all of this? Why is that person coming into my workplace? Why at um, a special family gathering is that person approaching me and making conversation so difficult? And how am I responding? What is God teaching me through that? I think those are really two important roads, uh, probably to blend together and to understand truth in our life. Mm -hmm. Marcus, maybe we can start by defining what a difficult person is because if there's if there's abuse going on physical abuse that's more than difficult that's you know, get your your boundary set up immediately yeah i think we need to differentiate that yeah. that's that's a really good point because people who are dangerous people who are physically sexually uh and even emotionally so hurtful that they are uh abusive And we have to be careful about the word abuse because people describe abuse in many ways. But the truth is there are people that are dangerous. And we need to set not only boundaries, separation, sometimes the legal system and sometimes our family systems to protect our children, to protect ourselves. Um, I think the world has changed, Bill. I think uh, even in the area of, which is considered a boundary, and I fully understand it. It saddens me, but many parents have decided they will not allow their children to go uh, for an overnight at Mm -hmm. someone's house uh, because who can you trust today? And we don't want to go with uh, fear and anxiety driven, but um, that's, we live in a different world today. Yeah, we do. We're just not sure, um, and we have to be very protective, especially about our children. So when it comes to crossing the line of danger, of course, that's a whole different set of uh, conversations. Mm -hmm. Dr. Marcus Bachman is my guest. He's the founder and president of CounselingCare.us, CounselingCare.us. So, Marcus, if you're dealing with a difficult person, is there wisdom in starting with holding a mirror up and and saying, am I a difficult person? Yes. 
Yes. And if, and I'm sorry. If we don't, <laughs> if we don't have difficult people uh, around us, if we think that either either they're not there or or they're everybody else is difficult, maybe we really need to take a look at ourselves. Are we difficult? And the truth is. You know, we are difficult mm-hmm. at times. We're difficult in certain situations. We get uh, we get insecure. We get defensive. Uh, How about we get selfish? Oh, yes. And we're hard to live with. Yeah. And the best person to ask is someone who uh, either we're married to or we're, 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 uh, have a serious relationship with or a good family member. Uh, who will be honest. And and we don't want someone just to say nice things. We want someone, well, it's nice to say nice things. I shouldn't minimize that. Mm-hmm. It's good to affirm. It's good to be positive. But it's really important to be honest. Are we difficult? And in what ways are we difficult? So asking those questions, that vulnerability, that openness allows us to have a mirror. Yeah. Don't we all have blind spots? We they, do. We do. So, and, so, of course, we're going to be difficult because we don't know our blind spots. Exactly. We don't know what we don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it takes a certain level of uh, courage, confidence to say, tell me what you think my blind spots are because yes. I love you and you and I trust you yes. and I'm going to try not to feel defensive when you tell me. That's right. And, Bill, if we ask God with an open heart, God, reveal your truth to me. Allow me to be seen as I am. Sinful nature, desire what I want because I want it, and allow me to understand how am I difficult. Before we even start dealing with the difficult people in our life, let's deal with ourselves first. Mm -hmm. Let's ask God to open and help us to understand that. Yeah. Is this the script sometimes, Marcus, when people come into your uh, counseling office and a couple, a married couple would say, all right, uh, he is difficult or she is difficult, so fix him or her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I certainly have heard that from yeah, I mean, a, a individuals, of that, right? but I I think they're a little bit more savvy than that. Okay, I think they say, you know, um, I, yeah, they may even uh, come across this way and say, I know I have my faults, but I just can't take the way he's treating me. And then they just kind of go on with a few more paragraphs about him. So it's a very minimum. Okay. Even it, it appears to be, yes, I know I have my faults, but that's a short sentence. But the other sentences mm-hmm. are all about her. Yeah. <clears throat> and and how unfair, and the list goes on and on. And I think we have to be really careful of, of course, we need to be honest when we come into counseling course when it comes to relationship but you know just like they say with taking a legal pad and putting a line right down the middle uh what what are what are my shortcomings what are what about myself that i need to have as a growth area Mm -hmm. and uh sure we can say what does the other person have uh in as a growth area but i i really believe that if i'm doing an inner inspection Checking myself out first, uh, you know, half the battle of dealing with difficult people. We have then the right attitude. We have nothing to prove. We 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 understand that we've asked God to cleanse us and to reveal to us truth about our own life. Then we have really a much more comfortable peaceful approach when talking with that other person. And Bill, I'd like to talk about how do we deal with? How do we engage with a difficult person? Because how we engage with a difficult person reveals how much have we really dealt with ourselves Mm. and taken ownership. All right, let's do that. And if you, how have you dealt with difficult people? If you have a, a story or maybe you're in the middle of dealing with a difficult person, you'd like to ask Dr. Bachman a question, you can do that. But if you can also share your wisdom, how you have dealt with difficult people, we'd like to share your wisdom with everyone who's tuned in today. And we'll also hear this on the podcast. So uh, text it over, please, 877-933-2484. You can learn more about Dr. Marcus Bachman at counselingcare.us. He and his amazing staff have got lots of services and they can help you. Uh, with your needs. So, Marcus, let's get back to how do we deal with a difficult person? 
I, I believe that if we know that we're going to encounter a difficult person, we should be prepared. I think we need to pray up, be prepared spiritually. I think it's important to ask ourselves again, uh, Lord, deal with me first. And let me be faithfully praying for this other person so that our conversation will go in a direction that has meaning and potential change. And yet I want to caution ourselves and all that. Just because we say and do and have the right attitude, Bill, it doesn't mean that that person's going to change. We don't have power over that. So we really have to have, even though we would uh, appreciate and, and, and give thanks for if there is change in the relationship, if there's change in this person, they see truth in their life. Uh, I think we also have to be prepared that it may not change. Yeah. So that, that, that assists us. In, in in the approach that we have with this person. Now, it, depending who the difficult person is, if we're married to that difficult person, if that person is our parents, if that person is someone who we is our boss, I mean, there's a lot that we have to consider as far as how do we respond. Uh, certainly if it's someone, for instance, like your boss, I think you have to be very careful of uh, the relationship there and how we approach uh, speaking the truth. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's, it's again, praying, for, uh, uh, praying and asking God to prepare us and praying and asking God to prepare the other person and then to have that encounter. Uh, I think it's... Uh, I, I don't think we should shy away. I think we need to uh, rather, many people just say, you know what, I'll just stay away. I, I, I don't want to, this is too difficult. I don't, I don't want to engage in this kind of conversation. He or she is going to be, I know what they're like. I know how biting they can be. And so many people just, let's face it, escape, avoid, and they don't deal with it. They can do that for a lifetime. And the saddest part about that is how could anything change, even though we're not guaranteed change, Mm -hmm. but we are guaranteed that, well, most likely nothing will change in our relationship if we don't press in toward them. Mm -hmm. Marcus, though, can you not say, I think in this relationship, there is really nothing productive that's going to happen because nothing productive has happened in 15 years. So isn't it safe to say there it's okay to, to to take your foot off the gas and not trying to be having something change after 15 or yeah. 20 years? Now, it could be that we'll have an, um, an audience uh, person up in our listening area call in and say, yeah, except on the 16th try, on okay. the 16th year. All work. right. But I'm, but I'm with you, Bill. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. Um, let's put our energy and our resources uh, in a direction, let's let's continue to have the door open. Let's not lock the door. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to do its work. And and as kind as God is to each one of us, He doesn't give up on us. I think we should have that attitude. But I but I agree that uh, keeping pressing in, pushing, and you know we may have to just agree we're going to have a limited relationship. We're going to have. Um, uh, less time together and less encounters, but that doesn't mean no encounters, and that doesn't mean never an opportunity. Uh, I think that we, there there is something about the engagement with a difficult person that we first and foremost make sure that we are giving them a listening ear. Mm-hmm. If they feel understood, if they sense that they're heard, if they believe that their story is told— even if you think their story is bizarre. Even, you know, you're coming out of left field, buddy. You're not right with your thinking. But the gift of giving that difficult person, that listening ear, moves it, moves the conversation in a way that you're able then eventually to share something that may change, allow that person to think about it. Mm-hmm. Marcus, a comment came in. I have a loved one uh, who's a woman who's been living in a marriage seven plus years to a man who claims to be a Christian, but is living in the open sin of pornography on a continual basis. The wife is trying to live First Peter 3, 1. 
and the church has preached that to her, yet the church has not practiced holding him to verses like Ephesians 5 or Matthew 18. She's discouraged mm-hmm. and broken. Mm-hmm. There's a difficult person. Absolutely, it's a difficult person. And, you know, she'll have to decide, uh, and God leading her, how, to, how she needs to respond. I think there's, you know, again, if she's leaning in, and, and you know, pornography is such an offensive act. It is such a hurtful act. It is, it's, it's, it's disturbing, and I, I, I understand for anyone who uh, has that experience in their relationship, um, trust has been broken, uh, it's, it's, there's a crossing over that is very difficult to heal from. I'm not minimizing the pain and all that. But I also think that that person, remember, difficult people have their own issues of whether it's insecurity, hurt, often hurt. They, they, they are a damaged, in a damaged place in their life. They're in a fractured place in their life. And what do we do with someone like that? I believe that we need to minister, if at all possible, to the fracturedness to the damage part, to the person that's hurting. I'm not saying that you tolerate uh, the pornography. I'm saying that let's uh, pursue making sure that we have tried to reach that person where they're at. They're, they're misguided. They're, they've bought a lie. They don't fully understand. They are in their own uh, hurt or damage. And let's address that as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Dr. Marcus Bachman is my guest. How have you dealt with difficult people? Maybe you're in the middle of dealing with a difficult person right now. Let us know. Or you can ask a question to Dr. Bachman, 877-933-2484. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Bill Arnold, host of the Afternoon Show. Revelation chapter 5 tells us our prayers are stored in bowls of gold in heaven. And when we pray, it is like a sweet-smelling aroma to the Lord. All to say, our prayers are precious to God. And we wonder sometimes if God is hearing our prayers and if he cares. Well, the answer to those two questions are yes and yes. Start by praising him, by reading his word, by submitting to him in prayer, and he will bring you peace and comfort. Connecting Faith to Life, Faith Radio. Welcome to the show. Dr. Marcus Bachman is my guest, and we are talking about how to deal with difficult things. People, If you missed any of this, we started off by saying it always is helpful to start by looking in the mirror because maybe you're difficult as well. But maybe God has brought a difficult person into your life for a purpose. And we don't know exactly what God intends, but he is at work in refining our character and making us the man or woman of God that he wants us to be. So that's always a good thing to know and understand. But, uh, Marcus, uh, this probably represents a lot of people. This comment is, when is enough enough? Mm. There's, Yeah, well, it's obviously there is a point, um, and that, per, that person has to decide when is enough enough. The, the reaction to enough is enough shouldn't be based on our emotions. It shouldn't be based because we're reacting and we feel like... I can't take it another day. Those are feelings. They're real. Emotions are real. But rather, we really want to have a strong sense. Uh, God, is this where you're leading me? I'm not just looking for people who, who, quote, care about me, who will say yes to me and affirm me and not tell me, wait a minute, I'm not the one to make that decision for you. That's between you and God when enough is enough. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, there are many people that will come to counseling and say, uh, this is my situation. This This is what I've been putting up with for years. And basically they're looking for permission. They want to check the box right. and they want to say... Uh, now I'm permitted to end this relationship. The counselor told me I could leave. That's right. Yeah. And you know what? It's not a counselor's right to do that. Mm-hmm. It's not even a friend's right to do that. 
It's not a parent's right to do that. It is your decision based on your relationship with the Holy God that you've done the introspection. You've asked God to take the flashlight. You've asked God, am I responding because I'm tired? Am I responding because I'm, I have so strong emotion and I feel like I really, I want out. I want somebody, something than this. That's not a strong enough of a reason. Mm-hmm. Our culture would say it is. Our culture would just say, of course, enough is enough. Mm-hmm. But I'm very, I'm very cautious to be the one to answer that for somebody else. Now, listen, if there's, if there's physical abuse, if there's sexual abuse, yeah, we don't, we don't need to ask over and over, is enough enough? Mm-hmm. We say we have to do something in that case. Marcus, I've seen enough movies where there's a bully, but then someone stands up to the bully, and the bully backs down. <laughs> You've seen those movies, haven't you? I have. Yeah. And, and you know what? That's pressing in. That's saying it's uh, too often... People are silent. Too often people hold back because they're not sure that's going to turn out the way it it did in the movie. And the Christian thing is to be nice. That's exactly right. So when do you stand up for yourself and maybe not appear as nice? I think uh, we stand up for truth. Okay, I like that. I think we stand up and say, um, you know, I uh, simple, simple statements such as, um, uh, please... Uh, don't talk to me that way. That's hurtful. I mean, that's that's saying something to the bully. But who's, they don't care if they hurt you. Well, you know what? Uh, oftentimes, they're not. First of all, they're not even going to get that response. Mm-hmm. But if they get that response, it may slow them down. I I use the one two three baseball idea, and then you're out. Um, I just simply will say a statement. Either the same statement over or a different statement that has a, uh, this is not acceptable, it's not appropriate, and uh, you don't have a right to treat me that way. You know, I, if I say something with a um, protection three times, um, I don't need to stay in the room. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't need to put up with this. Yeah. Uh, you know, if it, you know, we can think of a thousand different scenarios, but typically that person uh, doesn't have a right to continue to bully me. And yes, even when you say something to that bully, if others are around, often they will be given the, the green light, the courage to say, yeah, the way you talk to her, mm. it isn't acceptable. Okay. And Others may come to the defense. The bully may still continue. Listen, we don't have a guarantee that it, that the bully is going to change, but there is power in the ability to defend oneself, to say the truth. And even if that person would say, I, "I'm open to having conversation with you," but we have to be we have to be respectful in mm-hmm. our approach. Mm-hmm. You can't call me names. You can't pressure me. Yeah. You can't force me. You've, you, you, I, I'm, I'm willing to have this conversation with you. Mm-hmm. And if not, I'm, I'm out of this room. Yeah. All right, Marcus, there's another comment or question. You know, when is emotional abuse and mental abuse on the same level with physical abuse? Because it's just as damaging. And I don't think the, ch- the church looks at it that way as far as discipline. Uh, that, is, that is incredibly important. I think that there is degrees of, you know, name calling and swearing and uh, cutting a person down to the very thinnest part of their being uh, that is as damaging as physical abuse. There's no question about that. And I think then again, then we're talking about needing to set up the boundaries and saying this isn't acceptable. This is hurtful. It is, it is a mean way that you're treating me, and it's not right. And if they're a Christian, you can say, this is not God's way. And either we need to have a relationship and build it in a way that is God-honoring. We need to get some help here. I mean, there are several approaches that that person needs to hear. But to answer the question, uh, you know, the church... 
Uh, it's varied. I, I certainly don't want to speak uh, inappropriately for any church because mm-hmm. there are certain uh, uh, pastors and churches that will never minimize the abuse that takes place uh, with with um, emotional and uh, the hurt that can uh, happen as damaging as physical, but uh, physical is, is easy to see. Yep. You know, you, you look at the bruises, you know, you have the, the obvious and, um, and, and, and then we can get into, you know, the fear factor. And if a woman feels like she's, um, you know, not safe, that's as legitimate police will obviously take that seriously mm-hmm. and they need to, uh, there, there are many people that will, Give me the opposite side of that story, but uh, I will. I will not, and I will say that in in response to the church, I think the church has become much more aware and much more protective. Not all, not all, mm-hmm. but they have become much more sensitive about other forms of abuse than just physical. Mm-hmm. Marcus, what if the difficult person is your father, and they just don't get it, so you give him an ultimatum? Is that helpful? Well, uh, I suppose it depends on the age. Uh, yeah. But, you know, um, again, I'm I'm going to go the route of what's, what's happening with a father that the father would be either that mean or um, hurtful in, in ways or, you know, name calling or, or minimizing the person's value. I think we... Um, yeah, we can give ultimatums. We can give ultimatums, but we need to be really careful about ultimatums. I think if the ultimatum is, you know, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna see you again, or I'm never gonna talk to you again. Well, you've broken any opportunity for there to be some potential healing, right? And so I think we really, really need to be. I, I, I would say that's almost like the the, <laughs> without defining the word by the word, that's the ultimate a decision that needs to be made mm-hmm. of giving them an you know ultimatum. I think that there are other ways before we get to that. Um, and I'm not minimizing this person who's, who's texted that in. Um, maybe they have tried 110 different ways right. already. And so I certainly don't want to minimize the efforts that they put forth. Mm-hmm. But I think we have to be really, really careful about what, 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 how do we how do we listen to this person who is you know so difficult? How do we reach them? They're a human being. Remember, God loves their heart just as He loves ours, and so there's 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 pain involved there. Uh, I, I I remember very clearly my own father who had a real anger problem, and I kept my distance. I knew how not to get in trouble with him. I knew how to if I can say, play the game of not being um, yelled at as much. I just figured it out. Mm. Uh, But that didn't mean that I didn't have a opportunity as time went on is to reach into his life, ask him more questions and find out what, what, what happened to him. And you know what? He, you know, at the age of 14, I wasn't a counselor yet, but I did unravel some things that that he was very vulnerable. And I saw some real genuine change of him softening. Wow. So you would consider that to be the result of dealing with a difficult person. So God was showing you purpose yeah. and you were starting to get your chops at age 14 to be a counselor. That's right. That's oh, right. Okay. That's right. I, I, I'm not saying I got the full results. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but but I saw change. And you know, when, when, when a person who is so difficult and they realize that, you know, you're not against them. You're not their enemy. They think for whatever reason. They don't get their way. They take it out. Wait a minute. This is another person who actually has some care and concern about my life is is thoughtful, even though it's it seems backwards. It really is backwards. Let's face it. Why would any adolescent have to take that role with their father? It's it's it seems totally unfair. To mm-hmm. be honest with you, yeah. But I also think that that God can use a situation like that, as unfair as it is, uh, 
to start working at the heart of that other person. Mm-hmm. Not guaranteed. Yeah. But uh, possible. Mm-hmm. Dr. Marcus Bachman is my guest. We're talking about difficult people. How, how have you dealt with difficult people? Maybe you're in the middle of one right now. Let us know. We'd love to hear your wisdom. 877-933-2484. And we'll be right back with Dr. Bachman. It's the Afternoon Show with Bill Arno. Drive time, drive time. Let's get it started. Jump in your car. What's for dinner? It's the Afternoon Show with Bill Arno. My guest today is Dr. Marcus Bachman. We're talking about how to deal with difficult people. And sometimes you wonder, does did God bring someone in your life who was difficult because he wants you... To, to learn something. He wants you to grow. He wants you to take on something difficult. Um, It's challenging for sure. And you can put up a strong boundary and say, I don't want to deal with this person. Or you can say, I think I need to stay engaged because this person is is in my life for a reason. Um, So as we try to talk about how to deal with difficult people, if you're in the middle of that situation or you have wisdom as to how you dealt with a difficult person, let us know what it is. 877 933-2484. Nine three three two four eight four. Marcus, one thing I hear is people are isolating. They won't engage. They're 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 angry. It doesn't. The relationship isn't working. They're a narcissist. They're they're not kind, and they're just not engaging with you. And what they, is the purpose then? And the, and they give up. And they give up. Do you blame them? Oh, that's a that's a tricky question. I I would empathize with them as far as how difficult that would be, but you know, I I think God gives us um, strength and wisdom and ability. And listen, if He's given us wisdom to say enough is enough, then mm-hmm. yeah, by all means, you know, move yourself. Say, you know, I I need to spend. Uh, time and effort, because isn't it interesting that if we overstep, spend time that's wasted with someone who is so unwilling to change, isn't it a, um, not only a waste of time, but what a lost effort of where we could spend our time with someone who is willing to be teachable and yeah. change. Mm. So there's there's a that's a really tricky arena of uh again saying you know how much how much effort and how much time um and we will hear testimonies of people who have been at this for 56 years. Mm-hmm. And we have people that say after 7 months or 7 days enough is enough. Right? Right. I I I think it's uh uh, it's a very personal and 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 God uh, answering uh, pursuit mm-hmm. that we need to really spend our time on. And uh, have, have you know we again we we, we don't want to be reactionary. We don't want to we want to respond with with a wise approach. If we really find ourselves with a difficult person having lost it with our emotions, having raised our voice just as much as they raised their voice, having been hooked in, I don't think the problem is so much uh, with the difficult person. Sure, (laughs) a difficult person is a problem, but the problem is still with us. Why are we being hooked? Why are we being so reactionary? Why are we responding with such emotion? Now, again... I think the person has to ask themselves, when is it that God is calling me to remove myself, to stop this relationship, to change this relationship in ways that I need to? But if we're still reactionary people, I think we really have to look at still look at ourselves. Mm-hmm. Here's a comment, Marcus. We need to probably revisit something we discussed or further discuss something we talked about. This comment is, you uh, guys have skipped over the agency of the recipient of this undesirable behavior to allow the perpetrator to remain in their sin. Are we not somewhat acquiescing by continuing to tolerate what shouldn't be happening in the first place? None of us are righteous, that's a given, but we need to own the responsibility of allowing the abuse to continue. 
Yeah. Now, now again, you're us- they're using the word abuse. So, if it's true abuse, then absolutely, that's right. a sinful behavior. I mean, that needs to be confronted. But the question is, if we're talking about, and we can certainly say that selfishness is sin. You know, there's the degrees of which someone who can be difficult, but if it's an abusive relationship, by all means, uh, you know, let's get the authorities involved, let's get the church involved, let's get our family involved, let's get others that uh, know this person to be doing their confronting and and uh, and and telling the truth and love. Uh, yeah, let, 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 let's get a herd of people in. I, I'm not at all opposed to that. All I'm saying is that, listen, <laughs> whether it's in your workplace or in your family or your neighborhood, uh, there, there are difficult people. And so we need to be uh, mindful and wise on how we approach difficult people. Today's subject is difficult people. It's not necessarily focused on the person that has crossed the line with abuse. That, I do believe, is a different category. No, I agree. I agree. Difficult people are challenging. Maybe God has put a difficult person in your life to show you something about yourself. Uh, Maybe there's a purpose in that, as difficult and painful as that can be. But maybe you've dealt with difficult Uh, people in the past and you've got a story to tell or a lesson to share, we'd love to hear it because we can share it with others. 877-933-2484. Marcus, I think you were about to say something. Yeah, I I just want to give a kind of an idea of when someone is difficult and they confront and want to demand an answer. You know, many of us feel like we need to give an answer. And and I'm just here to say, uh, let me think about it is a really good answer. Rather than saying, yes, I'll do that, or um, you're agreeing to something that you're not comfortable with or that you'll regret later because you haven't thought it through enough, it is perfectly okay when a difficult person tries to corner you verbally and get something out of you uh, for a commitment is to say, let me think about that. Hmm. And whether it's a day later or several days later, you can simply then, I've thought about it. And no, I, I'm not interested. I'm not okay about going on that trip with you. Mm-hmm. So I, I just think that's empowering. And even for those that have some hesitation on uh, not feeling comfortable because they don't want to deal with a difficult person, uh, there, are some, there are some statements that they can be given that can give them some time. And, 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 you know, if, listen, if a person has self-confidence and they want to say no right away uh, or give an alternative, I'm willing to do this with you, but not, not, not spend the whole weekend because um, they know that spending the whole weekend with a difficult person would be disastrous. Mm -hmm. But can I go out and, and have coffee with you and spend, you know, from five o'clock to six o'clock with you? Yes, I can do that. That's an alternative. That's that's or or again, allowing that person just some time to think about what they want their answer to be. I really appreciate empowering that person. Mm-hmm. When we have difficult family members, and it's been historically difficult for many years, maybe even decades, uh, and there's there's no future point where you think this is ever going to improve. And I don't want to discourage people, and I want people to always try to take the high road and, and be representing Christ in all situations. But sometimes things aren't just going to, they're just not going to change. No, they're not. No. And so you have to make a decision. Do I really want Uncle Fred for Thanksgiving? Yeah. He's loud. He drinks. Mm-hmm. He crosses lines. Yeah. He's inappropriate. You know, uh, Uncle Fred, uh, you know, I'm going to give you this last chance. And if you cross lines, if you get too loud or whatever the case may be, I just need to let you know that you won't be invited for holidays. Now, uh, the week before Thanksgiving, let's go out for coffee. Mm. And by the way, I'll buy you a a piece of pumpkin pie. Nice. You know, there's some things that, that can be done without having to harm or damage a family uh, situation like that. Mm-hmm. And actually, 
we are talking about it's uh, usually a, a pretty important holiday. And uh, why do we put everybody else uh, have to witness that scene? Yeah, good point. I, I think we have to be mindful of, of, of creating some, some boundary for the rest of the family, especially if we know, <laughs> we know what's coming. Yeah. Dr. Marcus Bachman is my guest. We're talking about difficult people today. And if you have a story about how you dealt with a difficult person, share it with us, please. We'd love to hear your wisdom. 877-933-2484. You can learn more about Marcus Bachman at counselingcare.us, counselingcare.us. We'll be right back. Hi there and welcome. If you are a new listener, we want to officially welcome you with a free welcome packet gift. Request yours today at myfaithradio.com. Dr. Marcus Bachman is my guest today. We're talking about d- dealing with difficult people. We've been talking about this the whole hour, and now we're just uh, about 10 minutes left, Marcus. How do you um, uh, resolve conflict with a difficult person? If you're choosing to engage and have that conversation, uh, and, and you've prayed, and you're praying during that conversation, um, and you're trying to understand uh, how did this person, how this person get to this point? Uh, what is it that has caused them in their own life to be, su- you know, such an overreaction to, you know, becoming so angry and 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 uh, emotionally so outraged? I think there's a lot. You don't have to be a professional counselor to care. You you don't have to be a professional counselor to show empathy. Um, those are ingredients that God, through um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, has given to each one of us as we ask. And and I think that it's like, um, excuse the illustration here, but it's like a scab that is never wound, uh, never healed, and it's a wound that needs to have probably the scab picked off. And let's talk about the bleeding that's going on inside mm-hmm. of you. And if if you're sincere and if you're, um, you know, delicate and still strong about pursuit of that other person, I think you get I get uh, you'll get some answers. You'll at least get that person talking, and as they express themselves and as they bleed out some, there can be real healing that can ha- happen. You know, so often people. Um, have had a trauma event or something that has been such a difficult relationship they had in their childhood, they just need to talk about it. They need someone who's going to be friendly enough, genuinely, authentically caring enough so that 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 encounter doesn't become so difficult anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think think it's a marvelous gift. I don't want to overrate... Um, the success of all of that, but even on a uh, small percentage, it's so worth trying to give to the other person. Difficult people are people that we don't want to give to. Difficult people are often those that we want to say, uh, you're, you're really emotionally ugly. I don't want to even get close to you. And, and we get that. I mean, we, we understand that. But there's another way. <laughs> and, and, and and I'm not trying to go to the other side of, okay, then just just have them step on you and, and continue to be, you know, uh, unfairly uh, spoken to. No, not at all. I'm saying purposefully, intentionally, Holy Spirit, pursue that other person in a way to find out what's inside. Because what's inside is, 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 again, a person that is stuck and hurting and there's a reason why they react the way they do. And would you have the guts, would you have the Holy Spirit determination to try to reach in? Wow. That's a challenge. That is a challenge. Well said, Marcus Bachman. Do difficult people know they're difficult? No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, 
<laughs> they think first of all, you know, they small they live often in a very small world. Mm-hmm. And and because you haven't done even if you haven't communicated, it doesn't matter to them. You haven't done or met their needs or you haven't been fast enough or you haven't been smart enough or you didn't fix this or you know, difficult people react to problems like it's never their fault. They don't have the responsibility. They're angry, and and they can twist the story all around. I'm sure our listeners understand what I'm talking about when it comes to that kind of a person. No, typically, <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. It's not funny. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's humorous and, and because it's so crazy. Yeah. Oh. Here's a comment. My daughter is a licensed therapist and refuses to forgive and has cut us out of her life. We pray asked for forgiveness for our part from her, but no response. I didn't know that licensed therapists sin. <laughs> it's new information to me. I know I mean, it's operating. I mean, this, me. this comment is actually quite difficult to read because a licensed therapist, I would think, would be able to say, let's sit down and work this oh, out. Oh, I could spend another hour on this one, Bill. Okay. There are plenty of people in the field of counseling, and I... I certainly don't want to say I haven't had a, my whole list of my own mistakes, but they go in it for the wrong reasons. And often, um, you know, they haven't finished up their own business. They know emotionally, even therapeutically, things in their life are not right. Um, and and somehow uh, there are those that can still be of help to other people, but they haven't looked inside of them, their own selves. The... the um, it's it surprises. It's like asking, how does a pastor not forgive in his own family? How does someone of of you know uh, leadership within the church act this way? Well, it's it's even though it was a bad joke, it's 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 sin. You know, it's sin in every department. It's sin in every uh, marketplace of vocation, and and it it is surprising. It's it's shocking at times, um, but that doesn't mean that, again, we shouldn't be courageous enough, gutsy enough, and Holy Spirit-led mm-hmm. to even uh, minister to the licensed therapist that's got this wrong. Mm. Marcus, what if dealing with a difficult person starts to harm your own mental health? Well, I think that we need to be protective of our mental health. I think we need to safeguard ourselves. Um, you know, if uh, I, I, it's it's a bit of a uh, difficult question in the sense of: Are you taking care of yourself? Are you eating right? Are you are you exercising? Are you going to church? Are you reading your Bible? Are you having good uh, support systems? Good conversations? Are you keeping positive? If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, then I'm not convinced as much that your mental health will be as affected by this difficult person. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, if it's truly the difficult person is leading you into a mental health stage that's dangerous, well, of course, you need to rethink that and you need to ask God for wisdom. What do you do? Mm-hmm. But I'd be very, very careful about first and foremost, we started off the show this way. Let's take a look at our own self. Let's pray and ask God to reveal himself to us and show himself truth in our own life. That's huge. That is that is vitally first important. Mm-hmm. We just have a minute left, Marcus, but this comment I can't. I can't not bring this up. What if the difficult person is your adult child? He went to seminary, grad school, PhD, did not get the job of his dreams. He's angry at our conservative religion and us, hates that we could not go along with his liberal politics, and he's pulling our family apart. Wow. Well, he's got a lot of power if he's pulling the family apart. I'm a little concerned that the family would be pulled apart by one individual. I'm not minimizing the fact that it would be horrendously hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Sometimes education and letters behind our names can be dangerous. I agree. Because we have developed a pride and an intellect that we think we know it. And it is only by God's wisdom, integration of God's word into the practice of our vocations that changes our life. Mm -hmm. Dr. Marcus Bachman has been my guest. You can go learn more about him and his 
amazing counseling practice at counselingcare.us. That's our show for the day. Thank you so much for spending as much time as you could with me today. I've loved being with you as you lay your head on the pillow tonight. I just hope that you find peace, that shalom peace that comes right from the Lord. Have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Programming like this is made available through your support. Information available at MyFaithRadio.com.